What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So tonight we are going to talk about Crossroads. But before we get into that, I'm sure you've noticed that it's Sunday morning and not Thursday evening when my podcast usually goes up. Unfortunately, during Impact this past week, I lost power throughout the second hour and then into the later portions of the night. So I was not able to catch this until Saturday night, the rest of the show. And, well, here I am. So... Impact always delivers with their TV specials, and they did not disappoint here. We had a lot of pay-per-view quality matches that, honestly, this could have been a pay-per-view show, and I wouldn't have been disappointed. But let's get right into things. So we open the show with Sanjay and Josh Matthews backstage doing their little green screen segment, um, just basically hyping the show and kind of giving a rundown of all the match title matches that were going to happen tonight. Um... I really enjoy this. I think what they're doing here is good and different. It kind of gives it almost a sports center feel. Um, the only thing that I might change is that have maybe a different personality doing it. Just because, you know, you have these two doing this and then also commentating. You have a different personality. You can at least play off of each other. You know, Josh says, hey, let's go to so-and-so backstage and see what's going on, and they can have breaking news or whatever, like we saw later on in the evening, which I'll get to. So that brings us right to LAX defending their tag team titles against the Cult of Lee. Um, this was a really good match. I, I think LAX is very underrated. I don't know how they are on the independent scene or how they're viewed, but these two guys work their asses off in the match, and they really just put on some good content. They're huge oh, hugely over with the crowd and like i said these guys just put on a really good match here so lax gets the jump on trevor and caleb as they were being distracted by conan they get attacked from behind um action spills right to the outside L lax chants throughout the arena like i said they're they're hugely over with the crowd um then they finally go to get it back into the ring lax goes to work on them uh, Ortiz hits a face buster from the top rope. Ortiz hits a suicide dive on the outside to Caleb Conley, and Santana flips onto Trevor Lee. Uh, battle back and forth, a few near falls. Uh, Conan, well, Caleb Conley was the legal man in the ring. Uh, Conan was on the outside. He pulled Trevor Lee's legs out from underneath him. He goes down onto the apron and onto the ground. Ella Hex hits the street sweeper, gain the victory, and they retain their championships. So, like I said, overall, really good match. Very enjoyable. Great way to open the show. Got the crowd into things. So we go backstage, and Mackenzie interviews Bobby Lashley about Eddie Edwards not being able to compete. Lashley says he doesn't need a partner. There is a reason he is called Armageddon, and he is going to shut OV up for good. Then, after this, we jump right into a Global Wrestling Network flashback segment. Um... Still don't know why the flashback segment isn't posted throughout the whole clip, just on the simple fact that if somebody's just tuning in, they're watching it and going, who the hell are these guys? Why are they in a six-sided ring? And then five minutes later, there's a four-sided ring and completely different competitors. Still a little thing that I'm going to have a gripe with, and hopefully they change it in the future. So we see Alberto entering the arena, and we, is, we are told that he is not supposed to be here tonight. My initial thoughts were here is, oh, great. He's going to screw up the main event like he did at Bound for Glory and ruined a really good match between uh, Johnny Impact and Eli Drake. Um, but we will see what happens later on. So up next, we have the X Division Championship versus the Grand Championship. So this was Ishimori versus Matt Seidel, title versus title. The winner gets both championships. Good match here. Not really surprised that it, it, it was. Um, Seidel kind of focused on Ishimori's leg for a good portion of the match. Um, a lot of actual mat wrestling going on in the beginning of the match. Uh, Seidel was selling, uh, I guess, a mouth injury from a couple weeks back, I guess, when he got super kicked during their tag match. Um, yeah, we have a lot of back and forth action here. Bunch of near falls. Cl crowd was split again, which is good because I think. The majority of the matches were split between the crowd, which, you know, that's you, that means you're doing your job here. Um, so Seidel ends up missing a shooting star press. Ishimori hits double, double knees, heads up to the top for the 450. 
Seidel gets up, goes for a no-hands Frankensteiner. Ishimori holds onto the ropes. Seidel hits the ground. Uh, Ishimori goes for the 450 again. Seidel gets the knees up. Ishimori hits the ground. Seidel up for a shooting star press. And he is now your X Division and Grand Champion. Um, yeah, like I said, not a surprise here that they put on a great match. Um, I'm, I'm glad they're giving Seidel a focal point just because he's a fantastic wrestler in the ring. And uh, it should be interesting to see who this higher power is that he has been, I guess, dealing with. Um so it was interesting because during the last Chancery show, they just announced him as the X Division champion. So I don't know what's going on there, but that might be a little telling. Um, up next, we have Laurel Van Ness versus Allie. So Laurel Van Ness was the current champion. Allie interrupts Laurel's entrance by taking her out. Um, they battle outside for a bit. Match finally gets underway. Allie gets knocked outside the ring onto the apron and thrown into the ring post. Uh, Laurel controlled a good portion of the match. She hits a draping DDT. Um, and then she went up for a double stomp and she missed. Allie hits a code breaker. Both women are down. Action spills to the outside. Laurel hits an unprettier on Allie. Allie is able to get into the ring before the 10 count. Um, so... Laurel has the belt sitting on the steps like she normally has. She goes out, grabs the belt, goes to hit Allie with it. Allie ducks, hits a Death Valley driver, and a super kick to win the Knockouts Championship. So, not a huge surprise here. We knew Laurel was kind of at the end of her tenure in Impact Wrestling, so I don't know if this is the last time we see her, but good for Allie. Definitely deserves it. Over with the crowd. Um, interested to see who her next challenger will be as we saw Taya and Rosemary kind of rekindle their feud. And yeah, good stuff going on. Um, again, the last Chancery show that happened Friday night, which was taped last Sunday, I believe. And Allie was introduced as the woman's champion. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of one of those things when you tape all this television so far in advance title changes and then you do house shows and things like that so you know i'm gonna take a second here to actually talk about the last chancery show i i really enjoyed it um it was definitely a little better than the wrestle pro brace for impact i believe that's what the one was called their first twitch show um i know a lot of people were expecting regular tv quality um presentation but it is a house show um yeah, we had a bunch of good matches here. Uh, Eli Drake and Marcus Burke put on a good match. Trevor Lee and Josh Alexander put on a good match. The four-way with uh, Idris Abraham, P.D. Williams, Phil Atlas, and Brett Banks. Um, Alicia from Ambi was on, or was, had interview duties uh, during the show, and she does a fantastic job. If you guys don't already watch her YouTube videos, um, I would definitely check them out. She has some awesome impact wrestling interviews and it was pretty fitting that they had her do the event uh we got to see the debut of desi hit squad um uh, a good main uh, main event between uh, austin aries congo kong and matt seidel alberto el patron versus moose it, like i said they, they put on a good show um and i mean it's it's only going to get better from here on out we got josh matthews and scott demore on commentary uh, Scott Demore plays a hell of a heel on commentary. It's it's odd to see Josh in kind of the uh, the face role, but man, uh, Demore was definitely unrelenting in some of his uh, talking. But uh, I mean, it makes sense because he is um, in charge there. So back to Crossroads. So we have Mackenzie interviewing Austin Aries, and he says he is going to be the man to take Impact to new heights. He says, Johnny, Impact needs to be nasty and mean if he wants a chance at winning the title. So we hear Callahan talking about everything that happened with the bat incident. Um, we see the bat shot from 10 different angles. Never never gets easier to watch it. And then we uh, get a clip of Eddie Edwards leaving the arena last week. And uh, he basically says he's going to get Callahan back. So 
good to good to see he was doing all right. At least he uh, he had his mind in the right place. And that brings us to OVE versus Bobby Lashley. Now, this was going to be a handicap match because of the events that took place last week. Lashley comes out first. Um, the Chris brothers make their entrance along with Sammy Callahan. Uh, Lashley meets him at the ramp with a double clothesline. He throws both Chris brothers into the ring. Lashley gets up on the apron. Callahan takes him out with a bat. So he goes down. The bat's still in play. Um, OVE gets control briefly. Lashley ends up hitting a double suplex on the Chris Brothers. Callahan gets involved again, so OV has the upper hand at this point. I think we go to commercial, come back, they're still in control. And then all of a sudden, Brian Cage comes out, walks his way up to the ring, gets up onto the apron, smacks Bobby Lashley, gets tagged in, and goes to work, uh, beating the hell out of the Chris Brothers. Uh, Callahan gets in the ring with the bat again, goes to attack him. Lashley hits him with a spear. Um... Cage hits the drill claw, and that is that. So a little bit of an interesting turn of events here. It's good to see Cage come out and kind of even the odds. Um, after the match, Lashley goes to shake Cage's hand for kind of saving his ass. Cage just brushes him off and leaves. So I wonder if we're going to get uh, Bobby Lashley versus Brian Cage sooner rather than later. Uh, definitely interested to see that happen. Um I mean, you can only go so far with squash matches since that's what Brian's been doing recently. I mean, he fought Braxton Sutter last... Well, he didn't really fight him. He just came out and attacked him. But that was his first, um, I guess, competition with an actual roster member. So we go backstage and McKenzie interviews Johnny Impact. Impact calls Austin Aries insecure and says that insecurity may make him dangerous in the ring, but he's not worried. He came here to win the world championship, and that tonight is his night. And then we go backstage to another green screen uh, video, and we learn that next week we will get the Feaster Fired match. Um, it was recently uh, brought up on Twitter that EC3 and Tyrus, the first two participants in the match, um, I don't know who the other two are, but it should be interesting, that's for sure. So, up next is the main event with Austin Aries defending his world championship against Johnny Impact. Man, these two put on a hell of a match. Um, I know uh, reading uh, people's comments from the tapings, and they said this was one of the best matches they've seen in Impact in quite some time. Um, but yeah, no, these guys put on a hell of a match. Uh, very split crowd. Got th this is awesome chance. Um, a lot of good back and forth. Got some really nice spots. Um, at one point, Johnny goes up for a springboard into the ring. Aries sweeps his legs out from under him. Uh, Impact hits the turnbuckle, the ropes, then the apron and crashes to the ground. The man is good at falling. Um, Aries was able to lock in the last chancery. Impact was able to get his foot on the rope. And we saw some really nice spots from Impact. Um, we saw him hitting the sliding German suplex, a uh, double springboard kick, and a second rope Spanish fly. Uh, Aries ends up hitting a Death Valley driver on the apron. Got a handful of near falls uh, throughout the match. It was many times where the match could have ended. Um, but the ending saw Johnny going up for Starship Pain. He misses. Aries hits the drop kick in the corner, and then a brain buster, and he retains the championship. Two men shake hands and hug in the ring. Like I said, I, I hope this isn't the last time we see the two of them um, go head-to-head. -head. At this point, Alberto comes out. He's clapping and laughing, kind of staring at Aries. Aries talks some trash to him, and it looks like this will be Aries' next challenger. Um, I'm so glad he did not interfere in this match. That would have pissed me off a lot. Um, but, like I said... Really good match. Very solid show. Um, sorry if my review wasn't the greatest. I am a couple days removed from most of the show. Um, and the, the the viewership was pretty good for this week. Um, we saw it dropped from last week, but that's understandable with the whole bat incident. Uh, but Impact drew 325,000 viewers, which was down from 365,000 viewers last week. And it ranked 128 on Cable's Top 150. 
Um, not going to be an impact report this week. Sorry, guys. I had so much going on. I just wasn't able to do any research on that. Next week, we will be back to our normal schedule of the impact review on Thursday night and the impact report sometime over the weekend. Um, thanks for joining me. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.